Hi and welcome to this week's video. This week we are looking at our catch up in the greenhouse and the flower patch from the end of October and through that beginning part of November and the weather has been really mixed. We've had quite a lot of rain in October and then we had a really nice pleasant spell where we were able to enjoy the autumn colours locally here in Peebles in the Scottish borders and Hattie was able to enjoy those autumn leaves in the garden and play with them and it was great to be able to get some jobs done. We're back to a really rainy week now which is hampering the bulb planting but it means I am able to bring you another video and show you everything that I've been doing in recent weeks. So that's coming up in today's video. We're having a look around the flower patches in the garden. We're having a look at um, the last of the flowers there, my final bouquets and jar arrangements for the year. We're going to be going around the greenhouse. We're looking at all those self-seeded seedlings, see how they're getting on, the ranunculus and anemones, how they're doing and the sweet peas. And we'll have a look at the start of the bulb planting as well. So an awful lot to show you. So come along just now and see those final flowers with me. We'll have a look at them first and then we'll take you around the garden. So it's the 25th of October and I've just been around the garden having a look at what I can cut for probably what will be the last bouquet of the year. So we've still got some nice dahlias that I've been able to cut, we've got some asters, we've got some phacelia, that was a late sowing that I did in July and it's flowering now. We have got some yarrow down here, that's a second flush of that. We've got some Astrantia hiding in here, and that's a second flush of that as well. We've got some chrysanthemum buds coming out and some chrysanthemums over here. We've got some very last sunflowers, you can just see at the back, which are just opening up nicely. We've got some Lunaria Canon Went, which is just here, that you can see that's a second flush of that as well. So a really nice mix of autumn flowers and foliage which I can go away with just now and make into a really nice bouquet. So that's the last bouquet of the year made up now, the last one for this flower season so I hope my customer enjoys these final flowers from the garden and it's got lots of lovely ones to enjoy in there. We've got dahlias and chrysanthemums and asters and astrantia and yarrow and mint and eucalyptus, some zinnia and sunflowers. Lots of lovely last flowers. I'm going to miss making my bouquets but um, they'll be back again in the spring and for now it's exciting because you get to plant all of those new flowers for next year so lots of bulb planting in the next few weeks. So that's my bouquet all gift wrapped and ready for my customer to collect. So I use tissue paper and brown craft paper to wrap it in. I use a recycled glass jar so that the flowers are never out of water and stay nice and fresh. And that goes in a craft loving vase with a ribbon and a sticker to say where the flowers have come from. If you'd like to find out a little bit more and watch me do the whole wrapping of a bouquet and see all the different things that I use, then I have a video on this called how to gift wrap a bouquet that I can leave a link to at the end of this video. So have a look out for that. If you'd like a little bit more information and you'd like to watch that, then the link will be at the end. So one very last jar arrangement I was able to make at the very start of November with those lovely dahlias and asters and chrysanthemums. And then one final bucket of flowers was able to cut on the 3rd of November for my local florist, Helen. And that was it for the year. On the Friday the 4th of November, we had our first proper frost for the year, which took out all the dahlias. And it's amazing how they can just disappear overnight. But that was a really long stretch for me. Um, we have had frost in September before and my dailies have been taken out then so to get to the 3rd of November with flowers was a really good long season for me this year. We're at the end of October now and that means the end of the flower season for me and we've had a week of torrential rain where I've really not been able to get out in the garden and do much productively but it's finally stopped now and I'm going to start properly clearing the beds. It's always difficult to know when to call a stop to the flowers because you do have the odd few still going at this time of year but you'll start to see that the quality of the petals decreases and you can't use them for florists or orders. So this is a good time to start clearing the beds, getting all the stakes and the netting away safely secured in storage until next season, to weed the beds, mulch the beds and sometimes you even find, if you're lucky, some self-seeded little seedlings so I can keep these in and space them out in the soil or I can transplant them inside into the greenhouse if I think it's going to be a harsh winter and they'll do better in there. 
So here you go, you can see the Arleia a little bit better here. And there's lots and lots and lots of it that has germinated and produced lots of lovely seedlings across this bed. So there's going to be plenty of them to work with and transplant and to pot some on for the greenhouse. And some of the other self-seeded ones that you can find in the garden at the moment are corn cockles. They've self-seeded really easily. And also a few cornflowers. So we still do have cosmos flowers out in the garden, but you should maybe be able to see here that they're just not quite as nice. The edges of the petals are a little bit brown there. You can see they've been damaged by the rain, so they're not good enough quality to go to florists or for cutting. So that's a good sign at this time of year that it's time to stop with the flowers. There's another one there that it's just not quite perfect around the edges of the petals. So nice for having in the house. I'm going to cut these and just enjoy them in a vase in the house for me, but um, the quality is just not good enough for my florists anymore. So I'm going to get my snips just now and I'm going to start cutting some of these lovely last cosmos for me to enjoy in the house and I'm going to see what other flowers I can find to go with them. And then I'm going to cut all these back, I'm going to lift this horizontal netting and I'm going to roll it up and put it into boxes for storage and I'm going to take the stakes out here as well and I'm going to store them inside so that they can um, store nice and dry over the winter time and then I'll be able to reuse them all again next year. And once I have got all of the last few cosmos and other flowers out of the beds. I'm going to weed them and then I'm going to mulch them with our homemade compost from the compost heaps. And then they'll be ready for either covering over the winter or I will use them to plant bulbs. And I've got all my bulb boxes arrived now so it's going to be a busy few weeks getting all the tulips and alliums and iris into the ground. So an exciting delivery has just arrived. We have got the bulb boxes delivered for this year. So that's going to keep me really busy through the rest of October and November getting all of these in the ground. So we've got all sorts of exciting bulbs in here. We've got some tulips, we've got some narcissi, we've got mascari, we've got some irises, we've got alliums. It's going to be exciting getting these unpacked and then making a plan for which ones we're going to plant first. So it's always going to be things like the narcissi first and then the tulips are always last because we want to try and prevent tulip fire if we can and tulips prefer to go in and they do better if they go in in the cold. So at the moment its temperatures are still warm, unusually warm today actually, 16 degrees which is um, really warm for us actually. Um, I think it's just a one off and um, we definitely need it to cool down a lot more before the tulips go in the ground. So a bit of organising in the next couple of weeks, start off with the narcissi and then move through all the different bulbs until we get to the tulips at the end, which will be late November, early December going into the ground. A few weeks on in November and I've been able to start the tulip planting because the temperatures have decreased. We finally had some dry days, not many, so I've got out when I can to start those tulips. So planting the tulip bulbs is just like planting eggs in a carton. So quite closely spaced together, just not touching. And this is because we are treating them as an annual and will encourage long straight stems. But more about tulips in another video that I am doing in a couple of weeks time. I'm getting a good start on getting them planted, probably over halfway now. And I will definitely show you a lot more about this in the next couple of weeks. So 4th of November was our first frost this year which was quite late in the season for me and it was enough to take all of the dahlias out so they won't flower again this year now. So the next job for them is to cut them all back and then I'm going to leave them for a week or two in the ground um, and they will start to store energy for next year in their tubers. And then I'm going to lift them and store them for winter. And I've got a video on lifting and storing that I did last year for my dahlias. And I tend to lift the whole clump and I don't wash them. I know a lot of people do wash down their dahlias and they divide them in the autumn. But I prefer to divide in the spring. And I find that they keep better for me if they do have some soil on them. It prevents them from completely drying out and protects them a bit. Um, so I wrap them in newspaper and put them in cardboard boxes. 
I store the boxes of dahlias in an unheated part of the house. The side conservatory is quite good as long as the temperatures aren't freezing because you do not want your dahlia tubers to freeze, you will lose them then. So ideally you're looking at temperature between about 4 to 7 degrees Celsius, under 10 degrees, um, so about 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And so this is relatively cool but frost free and that keeps them in a really good state until the spring. So the site conservatory at the house works for me and then if I know it is going to be very, very cold and it's going to dip below freezing, then I just bring them into my workroom, which is largely unheated. I keep it pretty cool. Um, so that's a good place to store them as well. And then in March time, I'll start to wake the tubers up again. I will divide them at that stage and I will pot them on and keep them in a frost-free place until I can plant them out after the 1st of June for dahlias again next year. So one of the changes that I'm trying to make in the garden is that before I have had annuals that I grow mixed in with perennials in beds and it's all a bit difficult when it comes to cutting because you've got lots of different things going on and I'm walking up to various different bits of the garden. The three flower patches are in different areas and it's not very efficient to be going and cutting some stems from flowers in one bit and then going for the same variety which is in a completely different part of the garden. So at the moment I am moving some of my perennial plants and making them into perennial beds. So these are still be, have been in raised beds around the front of the garden and it's not been ideal because it's too dry there for them. I need to be able to give a still be some good moisture in the soil because that's the conditions that they like. So the top flower patch has always been a mixture of annuals and perennials but I have decided that I am going to try and change it into just a perennial garden. So I have moved a lot of the astilbe up here already, I've still got some more to go. I'll be able to keep transplanting the astilbe for a couple more weeks before it freezes because it's still very mild. So autumn is a good time if you are wanting to dig up and divide and transplant perennials and you can also do it in springtime as well. So I'll get as much done as I can just now and if there's still some left I will wait until after the worst of the winter weather is out of the way and the spring has come and this will make it a lot lot easier to be more efficient in the garden I'm going to be able to know that all my astilbe are one place in a much happier place where they'll thrive a lot better and then I'm going to have my beds are just dedicated to annuals as well which means I'll be able to turn them around much better as well. I do get asked quite a lot about do I do any direct sowing in the garden for overwintering so we've done lots and lots of planting of seedlings in the greenhouse which we're looking after for the winter time but I do have some in the garden I do and one of the ones that I like to do best is nigella it seems to thrive by being overwintered and gives me nice early flowers in May June time next year and at the moment it's just putting on some leafy growth and it's putting down good roots and then it'll go dormant over the winter time and then by spring it will really come back very quickly it'll put on lots of good growth and bring flowers to me earlier in the garden so my most successful direct sowings over the winter time have been nigella and cornflowers and corn cockles over the last several seasons. I have tried amimagus as well but I haven't had as much success with that so I tend to overwinter that in the greenhouse. The problem for me is just not knowing what kind of a winter we're going to get. If it's a very, very wet winter and the soil gets saturated, then quite often that leads to the seedlings not thriving. Or if it's a very, very harsh winter and we have temperatures well below freezing, lots of snow and ice again, I can lose the annuals outside. Whereas if we have a relatively mild winter, not too wet, um, a bit cold but not temperatures below freezing consistently then I can get quite a good crop of hardy annuals surviving the winter so for me I do a little bit outside and then I do the bulk in the greenhouse just to guarantee results. So in the greenhouse we have got anemones and ranunculus which I'm overwintering but I do have some outside in the flower patch as well and these are a little bit behind the ones in the greenhouse at the moment but they are thriving and they've got lots of nice good leafy growth on them and they'll be putting good roots down so hopefully these will do well over the winter and give us some early spring flowers next year. Gardening and flower growing is often about learning from your mistakes and one of the mistakes that we made when we first started out was that Robert built me these fantastic raised beds but they were extremely large 
and at the time I just thought fantastic lots of extra growing space but I didn't actually think about the practicalities so I would grow lots of things in these beds but then I couldn't access them from all sides I would have to go and walk right through the middle of the flower beds to get into the ones in the center to cut them and um, when you're growing lots and lots of flowers you're then going to stand on other plants and it just wasn't ideal at all so what I have decided to do this autumn is to split all the beds up by putting paths in them and that means that I will be able to access these smaller beds within the large raised beds from all sides and that will make cutting a lot easier and it will make growing lots easier and it'll be more efficient for next year so I've got four of these big raised beds that I'm working on slowly and this is where some of the astilbe has been as well and that I'm getting some of the perennials transplanted out and these will just become annual beds. So the idea with these beds is that I'm going to have tulips in this section and then once the tulips are finished because they're annuals and will be lifted I'll then be able to put some more annuals in them so I might put some status or zinnias or flowers that flower a bit later in the season in after the tulips are done. I'm also working on my third flower patch as well which was a bit of a mess really. It had been another experiment for me where I had had two beds that I'd made with paths down on the right hand side and then I had a big area where I had narcissi growing within the grass and then I tried to turn that into a wildflower meadow on top of the daffodils afterwards but it just hadn't worked. So it is a space that gives me lots of lovely spring narcissi but then after that it just sits there for the rest of the season and it's not productive and it doesn't look very good either. So I have been digging all the bulbs out and I have been putting them in the lawn around the garden and I have been changing them so that instead of two beds um, I'm going to have four beds in there with pasta and whole thing now so that will mean I can grow a lot better and it'll look a lot tidier too. So works in progress on the left hand side flower patch in the garden as well so this is where I've started clearing the beds. A lot of the dahlias in here so I'm starting to chop them back and then I'll lift them in a couple of weeks and then we'll weed out the beds and mulch them. I have managed to do sections of it already and I've started to get some tulips planted in these. So lots of work in progress in the flower patches at the moment but let's now go and head over to the greenhouse and see what's happening in there. So you can probably hear the rain battering down on the greenhouse. It's another day for working in here rather than outside planting bulbs. Hopefully we'll get some dry days so that I can get on with that soon. But one of the things I want to show you was my new staging that I have got. So I have got permanent staging that goes all the way down one side of the greenhouse, which is great, but it can't take all of the plants that I'm growing. So I needed somewhere else to put it. And last week it was getting to the silly stage where I was walking over lots and lots of trays on the ground in the greenhouse and there was just nowhere to stand. So I wanted to be able to be a bit more organized and also be able to have staging that I can move around at different times of the year. So at this time of year I turn part of my greenhouse into my Christmas shop so I will sell some of my jewelry in here and I'll sell some seed jars and pots of bulbs and other nice gifts for Christmas so I do need some space and I can't have plants all over the floor for customers to be tripping over so I needed it to be a bit more organized in here and also I'd really like to start running some workshops as well in the spring for learning how to grow cut flowers in your own gardens at home and I'd quite like space for that as well so just having these great um, racks here that I can move around and I can store them away they can fold flat and break apart really easily and I can build them back up again just means it's really versatile and at times of the year when I have got lots of seedlings on the go then I can use them and then I can put them away when I don't need them or just move them around the greenhouse and um, around other things and just have different ways of setting it up in here so let's go and have a closer look at some of these seedlings and how they are getting on so first up over here, we've got some Sorinthi growing away, which is going to be a fantastic foliage in the springtime. I really love that. We've got some lovely cornflowers that are growing and they have done really, really well because it's been quite mild. Even though we've had a lot of rain, it has been really mild in here and they've really got growing. And I've been tempted to go and plant them outside because they were getting so big. But at the same time, I know from previous years that if we've had a really cold, icy, wet winter, then they haven't made it through. And they're just looking so healthy just now that I am going to keep them overwintered in the greenhouse. And the temperatures are starting to cool now, so I think the growth will slow down. 
although they'll keep on putting down those fabulous roots and they'll get away really quickly in the spring next year when I plant them out. Lots more cornflowers here growing away nicely. These are one of my easiest ones to get through the winter. They tend to do really well for me here in Scotland. Up here I've got some Ami Magis and this is something that I usually find quite difficult to get through the winter and over winter for me. My things like my cornflowers and my corn cockles and things, I tend to get them through but the Ami Magis I find more difficult but last year I did get it through the winter so we're having another go this year and so far it's looking very nice, lots and lots of nice leafy growth on it there so we'll see if it can come through for us. So over here we've got some scabious. This is scabious salmon queen. Um, we're trying overwintering that this year in the greenhouse for earlier flowers next year. Down over here we've got some corn cockles. I'm growing some white ones and a nice rose pink cor cockle this year. Um, normally I grow purple ones but um, I'm trying out some new varieties this year. So let's go and have a look at some of the ranunculus now. This is something that I know that you've been talking about in the comments of some of my videos and you're wondering how these are getting on after pre-sprouting them. So let's go and have a look. You can see that there's lots of lovely, healthy, leafy growth on the ranunculus, which is great. And they should be putting down some really good roots as well. I know from potting them on that I could see some really good root systems there. My ranunculus are ones that I pre-sprouted the corms and the corms that I had were corms from last year. So the flowers flowered in May time for me, early June, and then I let the foliage die back naturally. And then I lifted the corms and I stored them in paper bags in a dry cupboard inside my house in an unheated room. And then in October, beginning October, I pulled them out and I started pre-sprouting them in trays. So that just meant that I laid them out on some moist compost covered them over, left them for 10 days and it was in an unheated room that was getting down to about 10 degrees actually because it was so cold in the house um, and in that particular area wasn't heated and then they sprouted away really quickly for me and then they had really good root systems and I potted them up into individual pots. So there is just one corm, one plant per pot here and they will grow away really nicely putting down good root systems over the next wee while until it gets really cold and then they'll go dormant over the winter time and then come spring I'll be able to plant them out and hopefully we'll get loads and loads of flowers. What I'm going to find really interesting is using these corms for a second time. So instead of buying in new, because last year I spent quite a lot on new corms and I'm trying this year to be a bit more economical and see if I can still get some really good flowers without spending the money on new corms. I know come January time I'll probably get tempted um, again but I will maybe get just a few this year to top me up and then we'll see if we can get some really good flowering stems from these. So there's some more up here so they're growing away really nicely. Some of them are at different stages. So these ones here are really quite far along, growing really quickly. Nice strong stems on them. You can see here that these are the old stems from this year that I've cut back. Lots and lots of lovely ranunculus coming and I've also got anemones here somewhere too. Let's see if we can find them. So exactly the same process with the anemones. In October I took them out of storage, here we are, here's some anemones, and I pre-sprouted them again in exactly the same way as the ranunculus and then I have potted them up and they're looking really good as well. I don't have quite as many anemones as I do ranunculus and I've got some out in the flower patch as well so although I'm overwintering a lot in here I do have some outside as well and we'll just see the difference at the moment they are definitely slower growing. The ones in the greenhouse have really taken off and the ones in the garden are slower, but we'll see what kind of flowers we get and when they flower, what the difference is in the springtime. 
So some of my slower germinators are my Larkspur and my Aurelia. And um, sometimes you can look at your seed tray and you can think a few weeks have gone by and I'm not seeing anything. And maybe this is just not gonna happen. It's not gonna work. I'm not gonna get them germinating. But sometimes you just need a few weeks of patience and you get rewarded. And these Larkspur, they were sown on the 16th of September and didn't do anything for quite a while. And now look, we've got some lovely plants. So I need to pot them on. That's another job for me to do. Sometimes it feels like a real juggle and a bit of a struggle at this time of year because there's so many different jobs to do. You don't know which one to do first. So we've got lots of potting on of seedlings in here like my Larkspur. We've got all the thousands of bulbs that need to go and get planted outside. We need to clear beds. We need to get things into storage for winter like all the stakes and the netting. We need to cut back any perennials and things that have gone over in the wind and um, just need a bit of a chop back. We need to lift and store dahlias. We need to start getting onto Christmas wreaths and things. So it does sometimes feel like a bit of an uphill battle and which job should you go for first? Sometimes it's the potting on that I tend to leave and if the weather is good I tend to crack on in the garden and get jobs done there. So sometimes it's helpful to have a bit of a rainy day like today where I could get some potting on done. So a bit of an mix in the weather, always handy. Good days get outside and get the bulb planting done, rainy days get in the greenhouse and get the jobs done here. And then hopefully by the time you get to Christmas time you can kind of breathe a bit more because hopefully by then you've got all the main big jobs done. So this is my Aurelia seedlings, which probably were even more difficult to get to germinate this year than the Larkspur. So the Larkspur did come through for me. The Aurelia was very slow. And in actual fact, it started to get frustrating because of there was some lovely self-seeded Aurelia coming up in the garden, which was fantastic. But the ones inside that I'd sown were still stubbornly refusing to germinate. But we've got there now and we've got some lovely plants. And the ones that have self-seeded outside in the garden, some I will keep in the bed there and some I will pot up and bring inside so I can overwinter them too. Over here we have got some nigella that I am overwintering now. Nigella have long root systems and they don't like their roots to be disturbed too much. So you have to be quite careful when you're potting on. I've actually got quite a lot that I've just direct sowed outside in the garden because I think that they will probably do better. So I'm just covering all my bases by having some inside, but I'm expecting the ones outside to do better, to be stronger plants, flower earlier. But these are just a little bit of a backup plan. So here's my sweet peas in the greenhouse, which I have potted up. They need quite good deep pots to grow in because they have long root systems and you can put them in root trainers as well. They're really good. I've just potted them up one to a pot, but you could do two to a pot because um, it's fine to grow up two plants up a cane at the same time when they go out in the springtime. And you can see here that I've actually pinched these sweet peas out. And usually in the winter time, I wouldn't bother pinching them out because the cold weather naturally pinches them and they do get um, a bit frost pinched and then they come back and um, they grow out their side branches and become nice bushy plants all on their own. But this year we had such a mild October that actually they were getting really quite leggy and stretching up and I thought I think these are really going to benefit from um, a pinch back. So that's what I've done and you can see here this one over here you can see new side shoots here so it's pinched off at the top there and new side shoots are coming. So Gardening quite often is just having a look at things and deciding what you think at the time. Um, you can adjust things season to season according to what's going on. And I think that these sweet peas will really benefit from having been pinched back and they will be much stronger as a result. And they're going to start branching out and producing side shoots instead of getting too tall and too leggy too quickly. Over here is my Achillea that I have been growing from seed. So that was our August, September sowings there. And they are growing away really nicely, putting on lots of leafy growth. So one of the plants that I said that I would show you was my tiny little baby eucalyptus seedlings. So these were sown back in August time. And here they are, got some tiny little eucalyptus plants growing away. And if I can keep them going through the winter time, we'll probably keep growing them on in the greenhouse next year and then plant them out the following year after that. And then they'll, they'll start to take off after that. It'll not be long before I can get cutting from them. 
And I find eucalyptus fairly easy to grow from seed. It's definitely worth having a shot if you like eucalyptus foliage in your bouquets. So every other flower has gone in the flower patch. So my dahlias have gone now, my cosmos, my scabious, everything has finished now with those frosts. But the last flowers of the year that are keeping going in the greenhouse this year are the zinnias. So look, there we go, they were very late to flower. I was too late getting them started this year, but they're clinging on there in November time, still flowering for me. And the last other flower that I have in the greenhouse as well is some of my chrysanthemums are still flowering away as well. So these last chrysanthemums will head off to the local florist and then that will be the end of the flower season for me for 2022. It has definitely been an interesting growing year. We've had a good spring, very dry summer, a lot of late starts with things like the dahlias. Some things have flowered really well, other things haven't flowered so well. So I'll be having a look back in a video in the future, just looking at the whole growing season and what I can learn from it for next year. But for now, it is more bulb planting and more clearing up in the garden and looking forward to getting my Christmas shop open and the Christmas wreath started. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed having a look round the garden and flower patches in November and also the greenhouse as well and how those seedlings are getting on and the sweet peas and the ranunculus and the anemones. There's a lot going on outside and it's going to be steady progress getting all those bulbs in for the next few weeks then starting on the Christmas wreaths and then over the winter time when the weather allows it I'm gonna keep on trying to change those flower patches to be more efficient for next year so we're going to continue on with laying those paths in the bigger beds to split them up to make it easier to access them and um, when the weather allows if it's still mild I might move a few more still be in the next few weeks and um, or do more early springtime next year and I'm going to get that third flower patch sorted out as well where I can no longer just have a mass of narcissi that's then faded and nothing much is happening with that area. I'm gonna have proper flower beds down there now so that I can grow more efficiently and maximize my growing space next year. So lots and lots of things that I'm gonna be working on, but hopefully it's gonna mean a better and more beautiful flower patch next year. Lots to show you in the next few weeks. I'm hoping I can show you my tulip planting this year. I'm gonna be showing you about how to grow some amaryllis for Christmas and early January time. I'm gonna be showing you my favorite flower books as well, the ones that I love to dip in and out of all the time and what really helped me when I started flower growing. And we'll have a look at some Narcissi paper whites as well and see how to grow them. If you're enjoying my gardening and flower growing channel here at Cloudberry Flowers, please do like and subscribe subscribe to the channel. I'll just keep you up to date with any new videos that are coming out. It's great to have you along. It's been a fantastic year getting to know some of you who do come back and leave comments for me um, after lots of my videos and I feel like I'm getting to know you, getting to know your gardens and it's really exciting speaking to people from all over the world as well.